All right, you guys, so this isn't really easy to say, so I'm just gonna come out and say it, okay? Um, I lied to you, okay? I, I completely and utterly lied to you. Um, yesterday, I told you that um, Davidator and I were gonna be teaming up and, uh, you know, building a relinquished, you know, slash Thousand Eyes Restrict deck for you guys, but um, we, could, we couldn't even do that, okay? We, we seriously couldn't even sit down and get one deck profile done. Not even a single deck profile done today, guys. Um, and the, the reason why is because um, David Ader and I, we just, uh, I don't know, um, we just worked so well together, you know? We didn't, we didn't want to just settle on one deck, so we made two. Oh. All right, you guys, so in this video, I'm gonna be showing off the, I guess, more meta-relevant or more competitive version of the deck that um, Dave and I came up with today. We actually Skyped for literally hours and hours this morning. Oh my gosh, like, just figuring out, you know, what the best ratios were, what the best cards were in the deck, what what cards were too conditional, you know, etc. We kind of got all that out of the way. It took forever, but we finally got all that out of the way. And we ended up with, you know, this really cool Go Seconds, you know, Relinquished deck. You know, it's still kind of gimmicky because it's Relinquished. Um, still really good, though. It's still pretty consistent and everything. It's the more, you know, the deck doesn't really care what its matchups are um, in comparison to the deck I'm about to show you. So if you want to check out the more casual, fun, and just like more in the spirits of the deck version of this deck that actually summons Relinquished out, then be sure to go check out uh, Davinator's video right now. That is the video for you. But if you want to stick around and see what we came up with, you know, the more we kind of played with the deck to try to make it as competitive as we could together, you know, we kind of just put our heads together to see oh, if we could make the deck as good as possible. And that's exactly what we did. If you are more interested in that, then, then stick around because I'm going to be showing you that deck right now. So we're going to start this off with the new Millennium Eyes Illusionist. It's a very, very powerful card, and it's kind of what um, inspired us to take this direction with the deck because what we found more and more and more is that the new Relinquished Fusion is really, really good, and we kind of wanted that and the new, uh, you know, Illusionist in hand. We always wanted those two in hand, so what we did is we kind of dumbed down the normal summons, especially because we figured out that, you know, most of our monsters are spellcasters, so we threw in the spellbook engine, but um, you guys can kind of see all that come together now. I'm going to try to explain as I go, though. So first up, you know, three copies of the new Illusionist because it's a fantastic kind of, you know, hand trap for the deck. You kind of use it to kind of pivot off of during your opponent's turn to kind of disrupt them and kind of get like this extra plus in a way, you know what I mean? Just disrupt them, take cards away from them. It's a really good card. Um, it's fantastic, you know, just it's, it's pretty much like a uh, an archetype specific hand trap for the deck that works with your th uh, Thousand Eyes. It's kind of what it does. And then you play three copies of Relinquished. I mean, you don't summon this in the deck, but you use it as your, you know, your fusion name so you can summon out the new Thousand Eyes Restrict card, which is fantastic. It's a really good reactive card. It's actually kind of broken, which is why we kind of focus the deck around it more to be, uh, we focus this deck around just being able to be as reactive to whatever meta deck you're playing against as possible. We kind of just sat down and we're like, well, we can make this deck more and more and more reactive. We can make it draw and draw and draw more. And that's kind of what we like drilled down and came up with, you know, when we as we were building this and stuff. But speaking of spell books and the Blue Boy engine, we play two copies of Blue Boy because it's really good. The spellcaster, you know, you send it off of the uh, spell book of knowledge, draw two cards, fantastic, fantastic card. You know, really good plus one search card for the deck. Um, but then you play two copies of Effect Wailer. And the reason why it's because um, you want to, you don't want to play Ghost Ogre necessarily. Ghost Ogre is kind of better against Pendulums, for example, uh, getting rid of the Electromite so those two zones don't get opened up for your opponents. Uh, but we kind of wanted to be able to kind of have that effect negation, but still have a monster to suck up, if that makes any sort of sense. Uh, that's just how we kind of looked at it. So we just went with Effect Veiler. Plus, Effect Veiler is a little more budget, um, especially because, I mean, the next cards aren't necessarily budgets. I mean, they kind of go up and down in price. But uh, we play a uh, Three Radiant because the Radiant, it's just, it's a really good kaiju monster. It is a dark for our Lure of Darkness, which helps us dig more along with our Spellbook Engine. And Radiant is also our Sacred Sword of Seven Stars target, which used to be a third effect mailer, but we added se Seven Swords because it just made the deck that much more consistent, especially because of how much you dig with the deck and stuff. You kind of want to pitch your kaiju to dig more to get all of your pieces. Um, it's just kind of hard to explain if you don't play the deck. This next part, though, is hilarious, or I think it's hilarious anyways. What we found is that... We didn't really summon from our extra deck, like, at all, except for Link Karibo and Millennium Eyes Restrict. That was 
it. Like, that's all you really summoned. So we added three Ghost Reaper. And the reason why we added three Reaper is because, you know, we wanted to be able to combat the meta. So because of that, and just because of us not really wanting to go into the extra deck, like, at all, ever, we just filled up the extra deck with, with Reaper targets. That's what we did, just because we just found ourselves more and more. Every time we tried to, like, you know, put more cards in the extra deck with Brilliant Fusion, or whatever direction we went with with the deck, like, no matter what direction we went with, um, it just kind of kept coming back to more or less this, which was kind of like playing bare minimum monsters and just kind of being really reactionary, which isn't necessarily a bad thing. It just kind of makes this deck profile really, really interesting. But what we did do was we went ahead and added a Herald of Arclight just because you can normal summon your Ghost Reaper because it is a level three tuner. Herald of Arclight is just a really good card and, you know, you can use it, you know, tribute its effect, and, you know, then it'll give you a search for Relinquish. So it actually kind of works with the deck as well. But then you play two copies of Prep. All you do is use it to search your Relinquish, you know, which is your fusion target. And then you play three copies of Allure of Darkness. And you play Allure of Darkness just for draw power. And of course, we use Spellbook of Knowledge for the same thing. We just use it to dig and dig and dig. Same thing with Pot of Desires, Pot of Duality, Sacred Sword of Seven Stars, and of course, Upstart Goblin. We just found ourselves just really draw hungry with the deck. So that's kind of what we did. Um, the, the three Pot of Duality were like the last three additions to the deck. We were like brainstorming, trying to figure out, you know, what we're seriously sitting at like 37 cards and we're just like brainstorming. We're like, Pot of Duality, we, we don't really summon, we just kind of set up to react to our opponent. So we added the Duality and it fixed the whole deck, gave us 40 cards, so we were like, man, that's awesome. But two cards that we kind of always kept the whole time were Monster Reborn and Soul Charge, because those two cards are just really great cards, you know, like really good comeback cards, plus, you know, Monster Reborn, you can take something out of your opponent's graveyard, which is really good and can be disruptive. And then we play one Foolish Burial uh, for the Illusionist and, of course, for Relinquished himself, because you can banish Relinquished out of the graveyard off of the fusion. And to round off the deck, three spell Book of Secrets because it completes your spellbook engine so you can draw cards of course and then you have your three relinquished fusion which is pretty much the main it is it is the win condition of the deck okay the whole deck revolves around getting those pieces all three pieces to your hand you know relinquished um you know actually technically four pieces let's put it that way you want a hand trap you want the illusionist and you want the uh, fusion you want those three things i guess four things because you need the relinquished itself kind of you either need the relinquished in the graveyard or in your hand but either way you just need those pieces you want to dig for those pieces and the deck really is consistent super consistent and getting those pieces at that but um you want those pieces just to be as reactionary during your opponent's turn as possible, but um, the deck can also go second just fine. It's actually really good at going second or first. The only thing I will note though about this deck is the same thing I noted at the beginning of the video. This deck has to play against meta. It has to. Um, the other version of the deck that you will see on Davinator's channel, definitely, you know, we, we sat down, we made that deck, and we were happy with that deck, and we just, but we came to the conclusion that if it played against meta, I mean, we were playing pendulums, you know, playing against all kinds of decks, um, we it just lost. It just straight lost even when it went second. So we created this deck to be more, you know, aimed towards competing with the meta, you know, competing with the best decks. But let's go ahead and move on here. So for the extra deck, of course, you play the three Millennium Eyes Restrict. Your main card that you go into, of course, that I've been talking about this whole video, and then your Herald of Orc Light, which I talked about earlier. And for the last card that you actually summon out of the extra deck, uh, Link Karibo. And it's actually come in way clutch. It's more, it's a really, really good card. It's, it's come in clutch way more than you think. But then literally, the entire rest of the extra deck is aimed towards getting rid of cards in meta decks, like Electromites versus Pendulums, for example. Omega, you know, Omega's a problem card. Um, totally awesome. You know, Paleos. Um, basically, any extra deck problem card, or any, you know, generic extra deck card like we even put decode talker in here baguska you know generic problem cards and just generic cards that everyone plays we threw in here as well just so that reaper is always as live as it can be and so that you can kind of hinder your opponent's deck um, to give yourself that more of you know that bit more of an edge um, especially because if you can you know hinder their their extra deck and then on top of that put them into, into a position where you're playing reactionary just against their main deck uh, you're, you're gonna you're gonna be put in a winning position and that's kind of exactly how the deck wins I mean literally it is the win con of the deck to kind of decimate your opponent's resources and just keep you know building up that millenniumizer strict beef him up as much as possible and just beat your opponent to death so now for the side deck we put in three clear karibo um it tested really well against a pendulum ftk which we did run into several times there's a lot of people playing that so watch out for that um we cited for that cited for trick stars um chaos hunter also really good against trick stars fantastic card they can't really you know they can't really play around it very well at all they can't beat over it. it's 2500 attack 
Dragon. Very, very good card. Then we play a three Royal Decree because we don't play any traps in the main at all. So Royal Decree, like citing it against like Paleo, for example, or just like, you know, any any trap heavy deck, fantastic card. Royal Decree has been around for a very, very long time. And then next up, we play three copies of Unending Nightmare because it's just disruptive against Pendulums because, you know, when you're going first against them, being able to like not let them set up a Pendulum scale is very, very effective. Plus, we can't really play Anti-Spell in this deck because of the sheer amount of spell cards this deck plays. So um, Unending Nightmare is just the better option here. And then for the last three cards on the side, just evenly matched because it's good against anything and you can put this in very, very easily. And that will do it for this deck profile, guys. I really, truly hope that you enjoyed it because we, I'm serious, like I've said this a couple of times now, but it's because it's absolutely true. We spent hours and hours on this just because like we were so interested in, in trying to make this deck is, I guess, as competitive as possible. There's no other word for it. We just kind of sat down and kind of, you know, pushed the deck to its limits and we were kind of seeing what we could cut and stuff and what wasn't really required and you know we were just kind of like seeing how far we could push the relinquish fusion and see you know what we, what we could make the deck do and stuff and what we can make it do on our opponent's turn and like how good we could make it you know decimate tier one decks that's just kind of what we sat down and ended up doing even though that's not what we originally intended so um, that's why we decided to do two deck profiles guys so be sure to check out David Nader's channel guys not just because you know we worked on both of these decks together but because he's seriously just a really great guy and until next time I'm gonna go try to get my actual hat back. Subscribe!